we are. Welcome back to the OSM channel. In the shop today, we have a 2002 Lincoln Continental. In this video, we'll teach you how to replace the front wheel bearings as well as the front lower ball joints. Before you think about attempting this job, I'm gonna warn you, this is like an intermediate level job. You're definitely gonna to wanna to have a toolbox full of tools and some specialized equipment. So let's start talking about what you're definitely gonna to need to complete this job. For one, a ball joint press tool. So this is basically a big seat pack with some adapters so you can press out a ball joint as well as press the new one in. That is a must. Secondly, a fork kit. I found this to be very helpful for separating that lower ball joint and the lower control arm. Optional, but I'd recommend it. You're definitely gonna wanna have a slide hammer kit. So included in the slide hammer kit are a couple hub adapters, and this is gonna be really helpful for removing the old wheel bearing as well as pressing out the CV axle from the hub and bearing assembly. So definitely a kit like that. I'll leave links for all these tools in the description down below. Aside from that, you are gonna need a large socket for the axle nut. You're gonna need a 30 millimeter uh, axle nut socket. So that's a specialized socket right there. Aside from that, definitely gonna wanna have some big pry bars, a bunch of hammers, you know, the standard stuff. Uh, mostly gonna be using half inch drive sockets and a few 3 8 inch drive sockets. So, you know, take out the big boys for this job. And another tool that I highly recommend here, an impact driver. This is my Makita. This is a Makita XWT15. Highly recommend having an impact for this job. It's just gonna save your wrist, save your body, and make this job a lot easier. So first things first, we need to pop off the hubcaps, which I've already done. And while the car is still on the ground, we're gonna have to crack that axle nut loose. So let me set up the camera on the floor, and we'll get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take a two-foot breaker bar with that 30 millimeter socket. We're gonna slide it over the axle nut, and we're gonna crack this loose. Next, I'm gonna jack up the car, and then we'll remove these lug nuts with the impact. If you do not have an impact, then you're gonna to wanna to crack all these lug nuts on the ground with a breaker bar. Next, we can take our three quarter inch socket and remove all these lug nuts. Make sure we put some jack stands underneath the car. Next, I'm gonna switch back to my 30 millimeter socket and remove this axle nut the rest of the way. So next, we're gonna to have to remove the front brake caliper. And to make this job a lot easier, I'd recommend you go in the car, turn the key to the on position, don't start the car, but we're gonna to wanna to turn the wheel all the way to the right or left, depending on what side of the car you're working on. Because I'm working on the passenger side, I'm gonna turn the wheel all the way to the right, and it's gonna give us much better access to the bolts for that caliper bracket. All right, so we need to remove this caliper assembly. Now, before you go ahead and unbolt it, I recommend you either make or purchase one of these S-hooks. I'm gonna hook this on the frame so that way, when I remove this caliper, I'm just gonna hang the caliper on the S-hook which is attached to the frame so we don't put pressure on that brake line. Next, you're gonna need a 15, or no, yeah, 15. So next, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove this bolt here as well as this bolt here. And these bolts hold the caliper assembly onto the knuckle. And after we remove those bolts, we're gonna kinda pry this left and right. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to spread the pads apart so that way there's a little bit of separation between the pads and the rotors. And that way it slides on and off nice and easy. Okay, so I have those two bolts removed. Now I'm gonna turn this sideways kind of pry on it a little bit. What I'm trying to do is compress the piston in there a little bit. I felt it give way a little bit, so now this slides. On and off the rotor a bit easier. Slid right off now. Again, gonna take that S-hook, hook it in here somewhere and then hang this up on the frame so we don't have pressure on that brake line. And also, now we need to remove the brake rotor. And this one's coming off pretty easy. Yours is stuck on there. 
do not hit on the outer edges of the brake rotor if you plan to reuse it. If you plan to reuse it, hit here, 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 and here. It's the best advice I can give you. My next recommendation is to remove this 10 millimeter bolt, which is basically a positioning bracket for the brake hose. Also, you can see we have the brake caliper assembly hooked in the frame, so there's no weight on this brake hose. But this will allow us to have a little bit more play and not have to worry about the brake hose a little bit later on here. All right, so at this point, what we need to do now is we need to focus our attention on the lower ball joint hidden down here on the knuckle. The problem is this hub and bearing assembly is bolted on here with three bolts from the back side of this knuckle. However, we cannot access that knuckle until we get the CV shaft out of the way. And as it sits right now, we cannot push the CV shaft all the way out of here without removing the lower ball joint. So we need to pop that lower ball joint off and then we'll be able to kind of turn this knuckle assembly out of here and get that CV shaft out of there. So let me reposition the camera down low and we'll get to work on that ball joint. Ugh. All right, so now we need to remove this lower ball joint. I can tell that this is an aftermarket ball joint because it has this cotter pin that goes through here. When I did the one on the other side, it looked like it was the original. Also, another indication that somebody else has been in here in the past is the CV axle is free. Uh, if this was the original ball joint, chances are this CV axle would definitely be a little bit stuck in the hub right there. So I've already straightened out this cotter pin a little bit and uh, we gotta get her out of here. We'll take off that castle nut. Now in my case, this is an aftermarket ball joint. It's 21 mil. Just check the size before you throw a 21 mil on your impact. Let's remove this castle nut. I'm gonna get in here with my fork and try and separate these. Now to separate this lower ball joint completely, I'm taking a large pry bar, and I believe this is the strut rod. So I'm gonna take my pry bar in between the strut rod and the frame and just push down. And then, I guess I'll push this uh, towards the back of the car, yeah. All right, we're getting there. So now that we have this knuckle free of the lower control arm, we should have enough room to get this CV axle out of the knuckle here. Now, in my case, the CV axle is free. When I did the other side, it was not free. If your CV axle is not free, before you start whaling on your axle shaft with a hammer, look in your slide hammer kit and you should see a hub adapter like this. And in addition to this, you're gonna wanna look for this black bolt. This bolt has a centering pin. And if you look at your CV axle, there's actually a spot where the centering pin will go into. So what you do, take this hub adapter, bolt it onto the hub, use your lug nuts, tighten this down, and take this bolt, thread it through. And what you're gonna do, this will actually push that CV axle right out of the hub and bearing assembly. It may take a little bit of going, but it should come out of there. And you may have to pull this assembly forward a little bit, but should be able to pop your CV axle out of the way. And now that CV axle is good and far out of the way, and that's what you want. Now we have access to the three bolts that hold on this hub and bearing assembly. All right, you're looking at the inside of the knuckle assembly, so there's three bolts we gotta remove. One here, one here, and one up top. These are all 15 mil. Should be able to get them with the impact. So you have to move the CV axle around a little bit. Now that the hub assembly is no longer bolted onto the knuckle, throw some safety glasses on and some hearing protection, give it a couple good whacks. So at this point you have two options. You can either get in between 
the bearing and the knuckle assembly with a chisel and start on each corner and just kind of chisel this out of here. But you run the risk of marring the knuckle. So I'm going to try a more conservative method and that would be taking this hub adapter and the slide hammer kit. We're going to put this on here and we're going to try utilizing the slide hammer to pull this whole assembly out of here. Now this may work, it may not work. What may happen is we may just end up pulling the hub out of here. Don't really know. We'll find out and we'll go from there. I can see what's happening. I'm actually pulling the hub out of the bearing assembly. So to help this along, I am gonna use a chisel. You wanna use a chisel with a really wide point. You don't want anything too pointy. And what I'm gonna do, come in here where the bolt holes are, give this a few gentle taps. Go here, go on all three sides, try and do this evenly. You can see how that starts to separate. I'm gonna try and do this evenly. I just did two sides because it's kind of hard to get to the other side, but let's try this again with the slide hammer. There we are. Now before we press out this ball joint, there is a snap ring on here which we need to remove some snap ring pliers. This is a pretty critical step because if you miss this snap ring, good luck getting that ball joint out of there. There we are. All right, so now to get this ball joint out of here the rest of the way, we're gonna need our press tool. So for the top of the ball joint, we're gonna use this adapter. It's just gonna sit on top like so. So that will allow us to put uh, pressure on the C-clamp, but also when that ball joint is ready to pop and give way, there's that little space in there, so that allows that ball joint to pop up. Additionally, we're gonna need to reinstall the nut as to where the nut is flush with the bottom of the bolt. Let's go ahead and get our giant C-clamp, because that's basically what this is. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna use this adapter. So the flared end is gonna go against the nut and the side that is not flared, that's designed to be received into the bottom of the C-clamp. It take you a few tries to get it just right. Also, I did have to bend the dust shield out of the way. No big deal, we'll just knock that back in place when we're done here. You wanna make sure that this is oriented in a straight line. Now I'm gonna get my impact on the bottom and this should pop right out of here with any luck. That went up pretty darn far. Hesitant to keep going. I think we're good. There. We'll see how we did. If we gotta reposition, we will. Also notice sometimes this cap will get a little stuck because it's a really tight fit. There's the cap. You can see that the ball joint is uh, up. Let's give this a little tap and see if she'll pop the rest of the way. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, now let's try installing the new ball joint. A Little bit of uh, assembly lube here. Now, the problem you'll face sometimes with these aftermarket cheap lower ball joints is that where they put the boot on, you see they put this holding band on here. Well, this makes this part too wide to go down into the receiver. So what you may have to do is pop this metal band off, pop the boot off, that way you can get it to slide down in there. And it looks like in my case, I'm gonna have to do that. I guess that's what you get when you go with cheap aftermarket parts. I'm just getting in here with a uh, 45 degree pick. Trying not to puncture the boot. See, I got that band off now. Let's try and get this boot popped off. Like so. Just 
Just gonna slide that down. We got that slide down. Let's see if she'll go now. She should. Yep. Yep, so that's looking good. We'll give it a few taps, see if we can seat it a little bit. There's the bottom of that boot. So we'll have to put this boot back on here after we press this in, but let's go ahead and get our other adapter. We'll press this in and then we'll work on the boot. Got to press this ball joint on here. Again, a little bit of lubrication, good idea. But this is the main adapter you're gonna need. It's a real deep one. It's gonna sit on here like so. Take our big seat clamp. And the top of the seat clamp, I found that it's just gonna have to sit on the top of the ball joint and it should be fine. Obviously you want it centered as possible. This is looking pretty good, so we'll just kind of ease into it with the impact. See how we do, just making sure I have the right socket size here. But I think this will press right on here, no problem. Aha! Yep. Beautiful. It didn't take much. Get this press out of here. That assembly lube really helps, but now, you gotta make sure that you put that snap ring on there, otherwise you're gonna have problems. All right, I have my nice new snap ring. Try and seat this on here. These snap ring pliers just don't seem to be wide enough. It's always frustrating. There we go. Snap ring is on, now we need to work on the boot. Like a little metal lip, that's on. Might be easier than I thought. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. Urgh. She's fighting us a little bit. There we go. All right, that's back on. No harm done. All right, we have that new lower ball joint in. Now we need to get the knuckle ready to receive the new wheel bearing and hub assembly. Now you may find that there's a little bit of corrosion in here. Well, we need to touch that up a little bit, but you wanna be very careful. This is aluminum. You don't just wanna go in here with a grinding wheel and take this down because that'll give you problems with your fitment. What I like to use, a little scotch brite pad. Uh, this aluminum dust that comes off isn't great for you, so you know, cover your mouth, but a few turns, a few different orientations, just trying to get the rough stuff off. Same thing on the outside. Shine it up a little bit. You know, it won't take much. I'm gonna take some anti-seize lubricant. This will help to get the new hub and bearing assembly in here. Also, if we ever need to pull it out of here again, this should help. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments that I'm doing it wrong. If I am doing it wrong, please let me know why. What should I use instead? And then our new assembly. Three bolt holes. Just gonna carefully line this up. I'm gonna go around to the other side. That's looking better. So we're kinda on the home stretch now. And we just need to Line these bolts up, get them started by hand. You know, get at least a few threads in there. If you want, you could put a little bit more Loctite on there, but there's still some on here. Uh, that's probably not the right thing, but I don't want to make these too difficult to remove in case we need to remove this hub and bearing assembly again. This is all good. Now I'm going to switch over to my impact again with 15 mil. So when you go to tighten up these bolts, you gotta remember this is pulling this hub and bearing assembly into the knuckles. So you wanna crank each one a few turns, a few turns, a few turns, and just go around in a star pattern, little by little. To make this job a little bit easier, you may need to attach a ratchet strap to 
the knuckle where the brake caliper bolts on just to help kind of pull this out of the way while you're working on everything and that's what I've done. It does make the job a bit easier. So we are ready to reinstall the CV axle into the hub and bearing assembly. I'm going to take some axle and bearing high temperature grease and just lubricate the splines a little bit. It's always a good idea. Now we can take this CV axle and redirect it into the new hub and bearing assembly. At least attempt to. Okay, that's started. So now I'm going to relieve tension on my ratchet strap. Just work it in there. There we go. Beautiful. Right in there. So next we need to get this lower bowl joint back into the receiver in the lower control. I'm going to call it a lower control arm. I know that's probably not the right term because it's really just a single line. But we need to get this into here. So in order to do that, first thing you're going to do, there's a little hole in the brake dust shield. Push on that bowl joint. Make sure it's facing all the way back. Next, get your large pry bar. Go over the control strut. You're going to want to push down on this. And it's close. Just got to work the knuckle in there a little bit. See, I did that with my knee and we got it right in there. I'm probably not using the right terminology here, but it's in and that's all that matters. We'll install the new castle nut on this ball joint. And also with the new lower ball joint, it should include a new cotter pin so that goes through the ball joint bolt and in between the high points on the castle nut. And we'll just have to bend this over. Next I'm going to reinstall the axle nut. Remember there's a washer first and then the axle nut. I'm just going to get this somewhat tight with my impact because you got to remember we need to do the final torque on the ground when the wheel's on and I think it gets torqued down to around 180 foot pounds if I'm not mistaken but again you should check to make sure that you get the proper torque spec for your car but let's just get this snug. Now it is time to reinstall the rotor. and the brake caliper. Next I'm gonna reinstall this bracket for the brake line hose, 10 millimeter fastener. Reinstall the wheel. Next we can lower the car back down. Next, break out the torque wrench. For the lugs, I'm not sure what the torque spec is. I'm gonna torque them to 130 foot-pounds. That's incorrect, please let me know in the comment section. And then I'm gonna torque the axle nut. That, I researched, and that is supposed to get set to, I believe, 186 foot-pounds. All right, just finished up with the Continental. Took it for a quick test drive. Everything sounded good on the front end. So that's gonna conclude today's video. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.